What's up guys, Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're gonna to talk about cheap amplifiers, specifically the ball pump, blue point, blue dot, whatever you wanna call them. We've tested the mono block before. You guys said test the four channel, test the two channel. So I'm just gonna get both of the other ones out of the way. So as of May, 2019, this is the full line of ball pump. I'll tell you what I think, show you the results, all that good stuff. So stay tuned, let's find out what happens. My name is Derek and I test amplifiers to see how much power they actually put out. If you enjoy those kind of things, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Let's go on and see what we have today. Alright, as promised, the final round of ball punk amplifier tests. Make sure you check the video description for the mono block. Let's start off with the two channel. The model is 7502. It's rated 160 by 2 at 4 ohms, 325 by 2 at 2 ohms. Yeah, right. We already know that that is not going to happen, especially when there's only one 30 amp fuse. The 4 channel, the amp 1504, is again rated crazy 150 by 4 at 4 ohms, 300 by 4 at 2 ohms, which again, there is no way it's going to happen. It's got two 30 amp fuses, so it's got 60 amps worth of fusing a little bit better, but yeah, these power numbers are just outlandish. There are some length differences in the amps. You can see the big one is 11.8 inches, the two channels 8.6, and the mono block is 7.1 inches in length. The height 2.1 inches is the same with all of them, as well as the width 7.5 inches. Now the thing I really hate about these is the numbers they put on the box. 750 watts, 1500 watts, 1500 watts. Well, the mono block we've already tested, you notice we got, at the most, we got 800 watts, and that was a dynamic burst at half an ohm. But yeah, these amps just don't do anywhere near what they're rated. Here's a two channel. You can see the high pass filter, the mode switch, low pass filter adjustment, inputs and outputs, bass boost and gain control. On the opposite end, we have screw down terminals for power and ground, 30 amp fuse. Then we have the dual speaker outputs. This is a stereo amplifier. All right, so we're not gonna waste a whole lot of time. Let's get the two channel amplifier hooked up to 7502. Fire up the good old amp dyno. Now let's try some tests. First up, we'll try the AMP 7502, 4 ohm stereo, it's rated 125 watts by 2. Here we go, 1 kilohertz track, 66 and 62 watts at more than 14.4 volts. Yep, this ain't looking good, friends. Uncertified up to clipping, not much better, 67 and 64. And then dynamic power, yeah, ain't much dynamic power here. 69 watts per channel. Yep, all you can do is smack your head and shake it. Two ohm stereo rated 325 watts by two at 14.4 volts. Certified up to 1% THD, 100 watts, 94 watts. Uncertified up to clipping, 102 and 96. Again, just sad, sad, sad. Dynamic, one kilohertz. 110 watts, 104 watts. Not even sure why we're doing this, but let's go ahead and bridge the amp mono. It's not rated anywhere in the manual. We don't care if they rate it anyway, because it wouldn't be right. Certified 199 watts bridge mono. Uncertified up to clipping 211 watts at 14.54. As you can see, we're giving it plenty of voltage. Dynamic, one kilohertz burst. 221 watts. What do you got to say about that? Oh. All right, so here's the internals of the AMP 7502. You can see not a whole lot going on here. It looks like a single-sided board. 35 volt, 2200 microfarad filter there for the cap. Then we have 35 volt, 2200 microfarad for 
the rails as well just not a whole lot going on here as expected for the cheap amp that it is as a result you know it's sad but true here they are read them and weep you can just pause if you want to because i don't want to read them out but i did all the tests four ohms two ohms one ohm four ohms mono two ohms mono and yeah what a waste of time hope you guys like that i did this test because i didn't all right now let's look at the four channel model the amp 1504 this is probably the most uh appealing of all the amps let's check out the inputs and outputs you can see for the front channel we have high pass filter and full range and then we have adjustments for the high pass as well as the gain we have inputs outputs and another input for the rear now the interesting thing on the rear you'll notice it also has a low pass filter so it, it's the same as the front channel just has an additional low pass filter so if you want to run low pass on the front channels on this amp you're going to have to have an external crossover on the opposite end again it has the screw down terminals for power ground and remote two 30 amp fuses and then all the speaker leads are on the screw down terminals these amps are super thin aluminum very lightweight they feel very cheesy as you would expect for a cheap amp so now we've got this one hooked up we have two channels going into the dummy loads the big dummy loads those are 1000 watt 4 ohm resistors and then we have the other two channels going into the amp dyno so let's fire up the dyno let's try 4 ohm stereo which rated 150 by 4 again we have all the channels loaded and you can see how bad it did. What do you have to say about that? Thanks, Big D. This is Dick Riculous. D <laughs> All right, so instead of boring you guys with a bunch of amp dyno runs with an amp that doesn't do its rated power, I'm just going to pretty much show one more test. That's the 4 ohm bridge test and run it in two channel mode here because we've got two of the channels going and we know it's not going to do good. Yeah, right at not even 200 watts. Oh boy. And again, here's the cheap amp guts of the single-sided board here on the amp 1504. You can see it pretty much looks like just two of the amp 7502s, but it does only have one transformer. Pretty cheap, again, layout here. It's got 2200 microfarad, 25 volt caps for the input. And then for the rails, 3300 microfarad, 35 volt. On to the results. You still know it's sad but true. Again, I'm not going to say what all these numbers are. You can read them or just pause it. But basically about 70 watts per channel in four channel mode. Then bridged about 190 watts per channel at four ohms. What you guys say about it, Big D? All right, guys. So there you have my test of the ballpunk two channel and four channel amps. And what can I say? I mean, overall, not recommended. They're not built very well. Very, very thin heat sink quality control. I'm not sure. I wouldn't put these personally in my own car. I know some of you guys want to get the really cheap equipment, but there is reasons why the nicer stuff costs more. It's just built better. It's designed to last. Something like these you could use maybe in a boom box or using your garage as a stereo. I'm just not sure I put them in my car. So do what you want, but that's kind of how I feel about it. Power ratings are absurd. Where do they get these numbers from? I don't know. They must plug them into the wall socket or something. And that's where they get these fake numbers. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Got lots more stuff coming. Thanks as always for giving me the thumbs up, for subscribing to my channel, to saying what's up big d in the house leaving me a insightful comment below all that good stuff till next time you know where big d is i'm out of here
Yeah, boy, Big D gets the demo from EXO in-house.